What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the ZMAM Show. Today, we are taking a look at a computer build that is going to take on easily any kind of 4K footage editing that you might be doing. Uh, it could probably even take up the 6K and even 8K, which, of course, nobody is using. But the idea that we won't be playing the upgrade game in two years, well, this PC build is going to last us probably the next five to seven. I have all these wonderful parts that I've used that I actually got from another gentleman's site, but I want to show you... Uh, how we put it together and also sh show some benchmarking at the very, very end to show you just how fast uh, this stuff renders through and also scrubs through. And that was the problem. I was trying to do my 4K editing for my Dead Nightmare series on my MSI laptop. It's two years old. It has an i7 series CPU and, um, and a decent graphics card, but it just it can't handle it anymore. It would only play like three seconds of footage from the 4K scrub and uh, and it would immediately start cutting out the audio. It would start skipping like crazy. It's just, it's not working. So we're doing a dedicated PC build. It's gonna be awesome. I am so excited and also to try and build. Uh, this is my first build, so I am a little nervous about it, but there are enough tutorials out there and whatnot. I, I'm pretty much ready to go. So uh, we're gonna go through some of the parts and, and we're gonna get straight into the build. So welcome and let's get to it. For the motherboard, I decided to go with the AMD uh, MPG X570 Gaming Edge with Wi-Fi. So it had, the board actually has Wi-Fi capability built into it. Be careful when you're picking out your motherboard because not all of them come Wi-Fi ready. Uh, you may actually have to get a Wi-Fi adapter in order to pick up your signal and get onto the internet. So pay close, close attention if your motherboard has Wi-Fi or not. This is a Lightning Gen 4. Uh, again, it can take in the Ryzen AMD. Uh, CPU, which is awesome. And again, a lot of these parts I got from another gentleman's site because he had recommended them. After doing my research, I fully agree with his analysis. And again, this is going to build a powerhouse PC. Next up, we have our AMD uh, CPU. It is the Ryzen 3900X. Basically, I heard really, really great things about this one when it came to benchmarking against film editing. So uh, again, in the past, AMD was kind of a joke when it came to computer building. People never really respected it. But now, since the Ryzen series, this is a formidable force to be reckoned with. And so we're going to give this a shot because I'm hearing nothing but great things. And that's the one we're going to be using, the AMD Ryzen 3900X. Here we have our RAM. So this is our DDR4 RAM. It's uh, by v uh, Vengeance uh, LPX. And I do have 64 gigs. I'm doing the full amount because I had heard somewhere from a few different people saying that even at 32 gigs of RAM, when they were doing their editing of 4K footage, it was almost, they were starting to get that warning message saying that you know, you're know you almost out of resources. I do not want to have that problem when we am editing. So we're going for the full 64. And again, we'll do some practice testing at the end and benchmarking to see just how well the, the RAM holds up. Again, this stuff has an awesome rating, thousands of reviews are out there and it's good stuff. Next up, we have our dedicated, um, M.2 hard drive that's going to be inside it. So this is the 970 Evo Plus. And again, this is such a small little piece. It's amazing to know that there are two terabytes on this right here. Uh, they come as low, I think, as 500. Um, may have even been 250, but that's way too small. I had, I think, a 500 on my MSI laptop. I was always getting super close to going over the threshold. Uh, I don't know what it is, but MSI, they do not want you to use uh, the last 25% of the actual solid state drive. They say that it can get unstable and so forth. And anyways, I didn't want any problems. So I always had to only be able to use 75% at any point in time. So with that said, I used a two terabyte on this build because I do not want to continue to have to upgrade this. It'll be able to handle all the programs I want to install in here and it'll boot those up with super great speed. And alongside that, instead of going with the standard, just, you know, uh, standard uh, disk hard drive, I decided to go with the solid state Samsung. This is the 860 Evo uh, SSD, and this is four terabytes worth. Why four terabytes? Because I mean, when you're shooting in 4K footage, the average file size is anywhere from a gig to five gigs, and these are just for short clips. We're talking five to 20 seconds worth of footage, you know, maybe even 30 seconds or so, and you'll already be up to almost five gigs for a file size. So we need to be able to access these files nice and quick when we're in Adobe Premiere or whatever editing software you want to use. So that is why I decided to go with the 860 Evo SSD. 
alongside that, just to have extra room for files and things that I just need to access, you know, maybe some types of uh, editing elements or, you know, all those different add and drop uh, things that you can use in After Effects and whatnot. I have a six terabyte Western Digital. This is just a standard disk drive. And again, I'm not so worried about the speed of accessing this so quickly, but I, I do love that I have all that space to toss on extra files or if I just need the room, I have it and it's ready to go. Now, one of the more important pieces, now not so much necessarily with editing, but unless you're gonna do a lot of 3D work and layering and a lot of color grading and so forth, but is the graphics card. And I think I've read that Adobe Premiere is currently using um, the graphics card for certain pieces and even has a little icon uh, when you're when you're in the actual Adobe Premiere software. But either way, we went with the GeForce RTX 2080 Super, uh, Super Black that is, and uh, this thing should be amazing. It has a high price point at $700. There are other versions that you can use of this. I am going to put those in the notes uh, down below. But uh, again, I don't want to keep having to play this upgrade game, you know, every couple of years. It's just very, it's very expensive. So we're going to go with this one and hopefully it's going to kick ass. So here we have a full tower. It's the Fantex uh, Entho Pro Tempered Glass. And uh, I have the the full product description down below where you can uh, find the product as well. It's got awesome reviews on Amazon. Uh, again, this is a full tower. I did not go with the mid tower because I wanted a little bit more space in case I wanted to add you know, a water cooling system later on and I wanted to have a little bit more room um, and maneuverability inside of the Pro case. And again, that has that nice tempered glass side. And it's, uh, again, we'll show some pictures here towards the end and it's gonna look beautiful. And one of the last items, and not so super exciting, is the uh, the power supply, the PSU, if you will. And I got the Supernova, and this is the 750. You know, considering all the parts that I have here, and you know, maybe plugging in some other drives into the computer and so forth, I probably could have easily gone with the thousand uh, watt. Um, power supply, but I did not want to spend the extra 100 bucks. Now, if you're saying, well, you've spent this much, why not spend a little bit more? Well, that could be true. And if it comes to that, maybe I'll sell this power supply and get a bigger one. But I believe the 750 should be more than enough to handle uh, all the parts that are going into this PC. And last but not least, you just have a couple other last items. You have this MX Master uh, Logitech mouse, again, had really great reviews, and I have I haven't bought a nice mouse in over a decade, and finally I was like, you know what, treat yourself a little bit. So we're going to give this one a shot. Uh, Logitech is a legit company. I use their webcams and everything else for some of my streaming, and they're a great product. And alongside that, I have my Corsair uh, keyboard, and it's the K57 RGB wireless. I had to look that up because... I actually forgot the name of it, but it's pretty cool. It lights up, so that's always fun. I got used to that on my MSI laptop, so I kind of like the lighting. You can kind of see the keys easier, especially at night if you're working in a darker setting, which I tend to do, because while I'm editing, I usually watch movies or have something on in the background. Okay, so that was a lot of parts to get through, but we are finally ready to start building, so let's get straight to it. And don't forget, there are a couple different ways you can start this. You can actually attach the motherboard inside the tower first and then start adding the pieces, or attach some of the pieces to the motherboard first and then put it inside. I think I'm gonna go with the second part of that because it just looks like it's easier instead of trying to cram your hands and fingers in. No doubt this is a full case and probably have the room, but I'm gonna have the camera up nice and close as much as I can to give you guys an idea of you know where things go and and how this, this, this beast is gonna to come together. So let's get to it. Okay, so right now we have the back of the tower here and I'm gonna start by undoing these two screws to get access to the side where all the wires and our wire management stuff is gonna be in the background. Okay, so we have the screws off. So this thing has a nice little pull, pull uh, panel area back here. So it looks like you just kind of pull backward and a little bit and it just slides right, slides right off. It has some nice cable management already here. This is looking pretty decent. Uh, I'm not gonna be a fanatic about all this. I just wanted to look uh, you know, pretty solid towards the end. So again, we have our tempered glass side and inside there, so I guess we'll go ahead and undo these two. Oops. Guess we're gonna get ready to drop some things. Okay, so this one actually uh, is on hinges and pivots outward. Not so sure I love that per se, just because um, I think it'd be easier if I could just remove it, but, uh, Oh, hot dog, you can. You just lift upward. That's, that is really nice, actually. I love that. 
All right, put that somewhere safe where we won't damage anything. Okay, inside here we also have a box of accessories. I know inside here we're going to have a couple of screws that we're absolutely going to use. Oh, look at this. Wow. Check this out. A whole thing of screws and whatnot. It's pretty sweet. All right. So as we move along here, why don't we go ahead and start unboxing our PSU power supply. A lot of these guys use knives and stuff on here. Hey, you know what? Knives are awesome, but I don't feel like going to the hospital. So scissors work just as good as anything else. I will admit, I do believe that most of the stuff you pay for in these prices is the packaging itself. It's ridiculous. But I guess it's nice to have some decent packaging. Okay, so let's just go flip upward. Wow, very nice. Again, we have a wonderful manual. I'll put that to the side for now. Uh, carrying case bag. Don't know why exactly we would need that, but maybe for the extra cables. Eh, maybe. Uh, yeah, there's some more uh, ties. That's always fun. And then just a bunch of cords. Okay. So I'm going to get all these out of here. We're going to be dealing with a lot of that later, so I don't want to get too focused on that for right now. Of these. So here it is. And it's a glory. Pretty nice. Gosh, I mean, look at this guy. See, maybe a little over the top, gents, but I guess then with their parts looking good. So, so there's the fan there, and uh, as I've read, you want the fan pointing uh, downward, okay? Because there's a vent down here below, and I'll flip this over later so you can see it. But underneath here, there's a fan, and there's actually a dust filter down there as well. So that's pretty neat. And as you can see, this is modular, meaning that you can plug all the different ones in that you actually want to use. Uh, that's neat too. And then of course on the other side you have your your power cable on and all that other good stuff. So all right, so let's see how we're going to mount this thing in here. For the power supply, I noticed that inside of here, and I put these on towels so I can move this around, and I'm not worried about static because I'm gonna be touching metal throughout just to make sure that I'm I'm grounded, and whatnot. But see this unit right here? I could not find an easy way to get in to the power supply house. The power supply is too big. Yes, okay, so on the other side, as any person could probably figure out, there are three screws over here that need to come out. One, two, and three over here in the corner. So let's take these out right quick. And once we do that, Turn this thing around once again. And now you can see this guy now detaches and comes out. So that's pretty easy, no big deal. Okay, so now we have our power supply. And again, I guess we should probably go ahead and plug in a lot of these cords now while we're at it. So maybe we'll get to that. I will save you all the boring time of me trying to unravel all these. So I'll tell you what, we'll take a small break and we'll be right back. Uh, now that I've undone all the cables and whatnot, uh, I just wanted to make sure that we start plugging these things in. So each of the cables are labeled. So like you see there, there's an MB for motherboard and there's an MB there. So they kind of idiot proof that for the most part. I'm going to be taking each of the cables and attaching them accordingly. Like for instance, wait, here we have the CPU, right? And um, I'll see on here, this one actually has two CPU blocks. So again, we're just going to kind of move CPU one, CPU two. And so we're just gonna kinda keep moving through here and plugging these in. Uh, the next one we have VGA, which again, up top we have a VGA one, and there's a two, three, and four. So when we were doing the power supply and I was telling you to plug in these cords, you see the VGA one over there? That was the one power cord that we were uh, gonna use for our graphics card, our GPU. But what I found out with uh, this, Big old 2080, the RTX GeForce, it takes two power sources. So underneath, under the bottom, 
you notice there's extra VGA two, three, and four. So this depends if you have if you need more power sources for your GPU. And so uh, the one that we're actually using takes two. So you're gonna want to take another cord that says VGA on it and plug it into your VGA two port here, okay? Before you finally put this sucker in here into place. So I had to skip around just to show you that because I had made a mistake earlier on. But make sure you have two VGAs. And again, here is the cord. I will show you once again. So it says VGA on it. You can't miss it. It's from the power supply. Again, from our modular power supply. Here's the other side. So and then we also have uh, what is it? Our SATA cable, just somewhere around here, which goes from uh, it's like the six pin, and then uh, goes over to the of course the SATA type cable. So we're gonna need a couple of those for sure as well. So let's see here. We'll take the SATA one. And as we have SATA here, we're going to do this one in the next SATA spot. We have our four screws that also came into our box. I am going to simply kind of feed this little guy in here. And it almost fits in like just immediately, just like that. So we'll turn this bad boy so you guys can see. And then down below we have obviously four holes that are out in the open that we're going to use. Nice and snug. All right. And so that bad boy is in and ready to go. And we got all of these cables here and whatnot. So we have this nice kind of I don't know, a little protector area that I guess we can feed all of these cables through if needed. And I think I'm gonna do that for right now, just to get them out of the way. And of course this will, will come through here and then we'll end up feeding them back in later to get to all of our, our areas. So. So next, I'm gonna wrap things off. We're gonna go ahead and open up the motherboard here. And before I start doing, I did get some gloves. I saw another guy using these gloves. It's not a terrible idea because when we start getting to the CPU and everything else, I do not wanna take the chance of shorting things out. Now true, they can still have static electricity as well, so do not be confused. But as long as you're touching something metal and making sure you have no shock, then you should be good to go. So here's the motherboard here. We'll take that out in just a few moments here. Let us pull up the bottom. And we have, oh yes, of course, the stickers that I always hear about, uh, CDs, which are usually useless because you're gonna get all your drivers from online, from the site. You have, obviously, where we'll be, oh, okay, here we go. So here we have one little screw here, and another one right here. So look at, they even labeled it M.2, yeah, be nice if you could see it. They labeled this one M.2, which is awesome. Wi-Fi antenna installation. Okay, got it. We'll need those as well. And most importantly, the manual. Okay, we will need this. We're gonna look through it as we move along because we don't want to make any uh, mistakes along the way. Right? Right on. Okay, touching metal parts, make sure I'm grounded. And on the back. Do the tape. And here she is in all the glory. We're going to get to all this, guys. There's, there's a lot, but do not be intimidated. We're going to get through it. Uh, one of the first things we're going to install actually is the CPU right here. And you can see this one does not actually have a housing like cage or anything like that. It just has like a little lever. So we're going to take a look at that first. So now it's time to unbox the 3900X Ryzen CPU. Exciting, exciting. Let's see here. So they have a manufacturer's label back here. So once you score it, they know that you've gotten into it. Oh man, so much money for such a small little thing. It's kind of crazy. But uh, there's the fan also inside of here. You can see with a couple little manuals. We'll put those to the side because we need them. So take this out. All right, so the fan, let's, I know, I should be focusing on this important guy, but I just want to start looking at some of the other things we have going on. Okay, so, 
Again, all nicely packaged, plasticking and whatnot. Wow, this thing is like legit. Looks like a lot bigger than <laughs> a lot bigger than some of the other ones I saw. It does have the paste on the bottom. I do need to be careful about that. This is the thermal paste. It comes pre-installed, so you won't need to add any more. Uh, the, otherwise, it'll get super messy, so be very careful to get that. And we have our cables here. They're also inside of here. Take those off. Okay. Put those to the side. myself. All right, so now we got this special guy. Now we have to be very, very careful, okay? Um, all these little pins on the back, okay? Very, very important. We cannot touch these or anything else, so so very carefully open this bad boy up and grab it from the sides. Now, there is a little tiny arrow in the bottom. I guess that's the bottom right-hand side, right? And so uh, we're going to match that up over here onto the motherboard. So I'm going to very carefully move this to the side. The fan. Still holding this in my hand very carefully. Just don't want to make any big mistakes. Or it could cost you a couple hundred bucks. All right. So uh, looking on here very closely, I can see that the arrow, and I don't know if you, you guys probably can barely see it, but there is a little tiny arrow in this bottom little corner right over here. So that's the bottom. So that's perfect. So, and my apologies, that arrow is in the bottom left. I'm looking backwards on the camera. So I'm going to scoot this just to the side and raise that bar up. And then we're going to drop that little CPU guy right in there. And look, it just immediately just kind of falls into place. So we'll just bring this down and around. Boom. Guys, it doesn't get easier than that. Protective film here. Should probably take those off. A little fan and whatnot. Looks like there's two total. Okay, very good. And so moving forward, let's see here. I guess let's get ready to put this this beast of a fan on. So this guy here has um, these clips here on the side, which I'm not used to uh, seeing. So you can see these here, but I, I see the brackets also on the two clamps here. And a lot of the videos I watched, you're usually removing those, but it looks like we might actually be using them in this build. So I'd imagine this thing goes down and over. Yeah, and then those clips just kind of come down. All right, so let's, let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna move the AMD sign to the upper right because of course the clips have to go down over this thing, so. Okay, so we got it on. What you do is you need to go to the left-hand side uh, first and angle this clip, you know, so you move the lever, there's a lever, a black lever, move that upward, which will then allow this to kind of have some leniency and then you can push that down and it'll grasp the little notch that's down there. So do that to the left-hand side first and then you can come back over here to the right-hand side and then uh, move this accordingly and it'll grab it and, and hold on to it. So a little messier than what I wanted, but uh, we got it done. And it also appears that this unit has the availability for a light in here. So that's what one of the cables is for. And it's got this itty bitty little um, connector kind of guy. And it is to the left hand side of the AMD uh, main, so I guess let me Turn this so you can see what I'm talking about. And you can see these there's these two little connectors in here that you can get into. They are covered by these little plastic ports. And one is gives you the option, I guess, that just keeps the light on, and then you can access the light changing through your um, I guess the website or some software. And then the other one is like controlling it through the motherboard itself, which I'm not going to do. So we're just gonna use the little small one. This is just a pump fan up here to the upper uh, corner right here, okay? And the uh, actual one that you wanna use is just to the corner. It's actually right up here. And it actually says CPU fan on it. And then this little guy, let's see if we can plug this in here. Okay. 
Okay, so that's plugged in, and then we just need to find the uh, one of the USB ports and take care of this. Turn this so we can actually see what we're doing over here. Anyways, the point is, is that we're gonna end up plugging this into one of the USB ports so we can do that, because I wanna, uh, I think the color's gonna be kind of cool later on, so it'll be nice to do that. So down here, um, and I can zoom in a little bit more, you have some USB uh, ports. There's a USB uh, 1 and a USB 2, and then you also have a USB 3, which we will be using on this board as well. So anyways, uh, I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, uh, yes, you can. So you can tell that there's one pin that's just kind of blocked out. And so anyways, uh, that is exactly how this looks on here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into USB 2 and plug that in. So, and we do have this cable kind of down here in the bottom, but we're going to We'll get this put up a little bit later on so it's not in our way. Next, we're going to do the RAM. Okay, so we have our Vengeance, 64 gigs worth. I think this is yeah, 3,200 megahertz. So here we go, one, two, three, and wow, that one literally just slid right out of there. That's a little concerning. Okay, guys, you could maybe put a piece of tape on there. That would be helpful. So be careful taking them out. This one slid right out of the package. I barely even lifted it, and all of a sudden it just came down. So yeah, we'll leave that right there for a second. We have a airflow manual because it looks like this one actually comes with a cooler, which is interesting. I don't, I didn't remember that these actually take a cooler. So, okay, so we have our RAM. So the name is gonna be facing uh, towards the actual cooler, the Wraith cooler that we installed for the CPU. And let me get that in place. And I can see that it matches up and we're going to crunch it down, push it down. If you're only installing two, make sure to look at the manual because it, uh, they don't, they don't go right next to each other. They actually skip. I think it's like bay one and three and then two and four. If you're only going to be using two slots worth of memory. But again, we're building the powerhouse one. So we want this to have all Ford Dems. And I think this motherboard takes up to, if I'm not mistaken, 100, and 28 gigs of memory. So that is a hell of a lot. Crunch, crunch. And last but not least, again, name away. Here's one more look at it in case you're wondering. LPX DD4. down and crunch. All the connectors have moved and aligned so that they're nice and straight up. So there is the RAM. Let's get ready to move on to the next piece. So again, looking at the Vengeance fan that's gonna go on top of this, I noticed that it's, it is like right on top of where the motherboard connector is gonna go. Now there are these connectors that are right here that are gonna go uh, onto the fan. Okay, they just connect with these little slots or whatever. So that's nothing, they even show a diagram on the instructions. So that's pretty easy. But I just don't know if there's gonna be enough room. So we're gonna give it a shot. Scoot that over, move this into the center. Again, we have our fan cord over here and they do give us a small extension in case we need to scoot it over a little bit further, but it appears it just kind of clips on to the memory, but I want to be careful because this thing isn't, doesn't seem like the sturdiest. So let's see what we do. Let's see what we got here. So I'm going to do it where the Vengeance Airflow, again, I'm, to, I'm going to have the cord in the upper left-hand side. And, um, and as you can see, it's fairly stable. I think once in place, it'll be okay. I also wrapped this cord straight across and kind of wedged it in a little bit and kind of drug it around the side so it wasn't just out there dangling in the open. And again, um, I'm, this is my first time really at cable management, which I'm gonna be learning and I may come back at another time, but I'm fairly happy with it right now and I wanna continue the build. So we're gonna keep moving on. And again, we plugged that, um, that Vengeance guy. It's right here in the corner. Okay, it says pump fan. Okay, it's just, it's a three connector wire coming in, 
even though you have four. So you can just plug that in right there. And again, don't forget that CPU one. That one goes around here on the corner. And again, that's labeled CPU fan. So that's nice and easy and uh, can't mess it up. Now it's time to get this motherboard in. So let's see what we can do here. So we can tell by the plate right there, which let me get that over here so we can zoom a little bit. But you can see all the connect uh, outside USB and connectors and so forth and is now going to match up with the plate down below. So we're going to just kind of put this thing down in here. And I can see we got to scoot it over just a little bit. I can see the screw holes down below, and that's good. There we go. I felt it kind of snap into place just very, very gently here. Okay, so here's the motherboard, and I'm just going to zoom in here slightly. Well, actually a lot. Whoa, extreme close up. But you can see that uh, over here in the corner, barely, there it is. There's one hole starting there at the very edge, and then there's the second one, the third one, and then there's another one up there and they come straight across to the center and so forth and so forth. So that's where we're going to insert our screws and I'm just going to lock this off for a second. And it looks like, let me see, I need my screwdriver and we're going to be using those wonderful screws that we had before. And we're going to be using the center ones. They're the smaller ones right there. And we're going to go ahead and get these put into place. There will be nine total. Okay, so I wanted to take a moment and let's go ahead and get ready to install our six terabyte Western Digital. I'm just gonna take out this top slot right here. And you may notice inside of here, they have these little kind of pinholes or whatever like that that's gonna grip the screw holes on the Western Digital. So that's pretty cool. You can pull this backwards so you can kind of line it up and get it down in place and clip those in, undo the other side. Anyways, so you can actually Hinge those, we'll go back over to our bay, push in on the hinges, and get ready to slide this guy right in, just like that, okay? Take the SATA cable, and it has a notch, which you can see right there when you're looking at it, and we're just gonna snugly push that in, okay? So as for the solid state drive, these two front bays here are where we're going to house this guy. And so I've plugged my SATA cable in like we showed on the other side. I fed it in through just one of the crevices. There's plenty of room to get it through there and it lines up perfectly. And it looks like this one's in the way. So, you know, I don't think I'm going to be putting in another one. So I'm just going to take this off altogether so I can save time and keep moving on here. I'll put this with all my computer parts in case I ever choose to get another. Two screws is more than enough. Don't need a reason to overkill it. We have uh, these two cables plugged in right here. And these are our SATA cables, okay, for our four terabyte SSD card. So it's kind of just being plugged right in uh, there. It's, it's powering the four terabyte SSD. And then there's another one that I ran uh, through these little ports right here and over to where I have my Western Digital six terabyte standard hard disk. Okay, so here is one of the SATA cables uh, on the motherboard. This one's gonna go to our standard uh, Western Digital six terabyte, okay? So again, this has 
little notch in there that you can see and I can see the other one there. So we're just going to kind of come down in here and plug it in. That's it. At this point now we're getting ready to install the uh, M.2 SSD. This is the two terabyte little tiny guy. There it is. See how small it is? And this is going to come down right here underneath where this frozer shield was. So to give you an idea what this thing is, it's like this unit that was pretty much just sitting right over here next to the fan and over that M.2 spot. Okay. And so I removed three screws. As you can see, there's one, two, three. The other two screws are over here. And so I kind of already did it, but you need to remove this blue shield. Okay. So that it exposes this. And then that's ready. And next we'll take our M.2 card. I can see the, the slot. So we're gonna go down here, carefully. Installs at a 30 degree angle. I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's actually angled right now, currently. It's, it's like spring loaded, right? So then you're gonna take one of those itty bitty tiny screws that came in your motherboard kit. It is super small. I mean, you probably barely even see this, but anyways, it's down there. And so we're going to basically come on down here and get this thing installed. So I have my magnetic screwdriver here. And we'll go ahead and bring this down. Oops, camera. Okay, just gonna make sure. Tighten down. Okay. So now that that's tightened down, now we're going to take this frozen shield that we were talking about earlier. At least that's what they call it in the manual. Who knows exactly what it's called. We're going to get this back down in place. Okay. Screw this guy back in. Screw it right back in. So now our M2 uh, SSD 2 terabyte card is now installed and we're ready to continue moving on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready to install our wonderful graphics card, the big RTX 2080 Super Black. So I'm going to go ahead and slice and dice the seal. It's the seal of approval. Hopefully it is. Take the box out ever so carefully. See it? As I open this up, I have a nice installation guide and whoa. Trying to get, get in there. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. This thing. All right, let's, let's take a look at what we're working with here. We got our attention sticker saying do not <laughs> do not stall without proper electrostatic safety equipment. And they're not lying either. I mean, if I generate too much static, which I've been grinding myself every so often on metal things that are around, um, so even the scissors right there below, um, you will fry this thing and you'll be out uh, quite a few dollars with this one. 700 as I recall. Okay. So there she is. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and get this layer of tape off. Protective tape. Okay. This thing is uh, is beautiful. I, I don't mind saying. All right. So, as the good instructions tell us, that we're going to be installing this into the uh, first PCI slot, the one that's closest to the CPU, which is right under here underneath the fan. So this is the slot we're looking for. And then we'll also need to see uh, which bays we're gonna need to remove here for this guy. So, so when you kind of line it up, you can quickly see on the, you can quickly see on the back which bays you need to remove. So I can see that I need to remove the second and third 
bay uh, for this thing to fit in there. So just changing the angle slightly there, you can see that there are screws holding each one of these metal bays in, right? Now they go to the back. So after lining it up, I saw that I need to remove the second. And I believe it is the third from the top bay. Every, every graphics card is different, so you just gotta line it up to see what you need. So, let's remove these two. What a beast. So I'm gonna remove the plastic film, or not film, but it's like the protector. That was on there. And we're gonna bring this sucker down into place. Oh, oh, almost forgot. I had gotta push, push this little guy back. They have a protector also on where the screws are gonna go, where the screw goes. Okay, now we're going back in once again. Pushing down, thank you very much. We'll go back and get that screw that we used to take out the metal housing. And there is one hole here for that. So as I was confused about this piece, as I look at the instructions closer, if I were to install two of these bad boys, which, oh my God, that would really make this an expensive project. Uh, this, there's a connector that goes between the two of these. And anyways, that's what this uh, small area up here is for once you remove that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on because obviously we're not using it. Our remaining wires we still have here are, we have the motherboard uh, power, but uh, so we have that guy and then we have the CPU uh, power, okay? So you got these two right here. And then we also have the VGA. And that's gonna to go to our graphics card. I decided to get out a flashlight so you can actually see what's going on here. So the motherboard connector is actually right here underneath this vengeance cooler. Do you see it right there? There's the connectors, they're right in here. So that's where that fat cord is gonna go. So I decided to go ahead and remove this bottom plate off again. I should have probably just left it off to begin with because I needed the motherboard cord to come back through. So I fed it back through the port that we fed it through earlier. I pulled it back out. Now that it's here, we should be able to actually hide this cable down below, uh, right behind the cooler here. The Vengeance cooler unit is the motherboard power. For all intents and purposes, this thing is in the way. I'm taking it off for right now. Sorry, gotta get around you. Okay, so now we can bring this straight up. And this is kind of idiot proof. You can see the connector uh, kind of hinged right there. It's on the outside. So we're just gonna kind of line that up in a dark spot and give it a push. Okay, so now that that's there, we'll come back here very carefully take our vengeance cooler for now. Who knows, I'll probably have to take this off again eventually. And there you go. Actually, that fit on a little bit better than I remember it. We also have our CPU power that we have to run. And so we all know what we're talking about. CPU cord it has these uh, two connector, uh, two sets of connectors. It's uh, eight total pins, okay? And this one is actually going all the way up here to the top. And you can see the connectors right in there. We're going to the left there. Uh, the other four is also uh, another power set that I don't believe we're gonna be using. Maybe run it through the top. So I'm in the back corner right up here. There is a little slot opening. that's just running across the back. And if we flip those, there's a hell of a flip maneuver, but I think we can get those in. Okay, so right now we're getting ready to plug in our VGA cords. Remember earlier on, I told you that we were going to need two sets in order to power the, uh, the RTX 2080. As you can see, there is a six pin uh, connector, and then there's also an A pin, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the one of them that just has the six, and we'll plug it in on the left side plug in nice and easy okay and then the other one make sure again that your 
your, connect, your, your set comes together, but it has a six and a two right here, okay? It has like a little bar there that you can line it up. And we're gonna take those and plug it on on the right-hand side. Okay. Okay, now that those are both in, our GPU is ready to go for power. So again, we put back on our shield right here, we push it to the back. We're going to take our three screws right here. Okay, now, also back here, uh, which I had to undo some of these so I could get to these cables. So we're gonna bring these over here. So you see what we're working with. Okay. These are the little power connectors that are gonna come, or excuse me, gonna go to the front, and there's a little manual to see how these go on. These, uh, they say like um, power SW and uh, reset SW and so forth, and they have plus and negative, so we're gonna figure those out. Those are gonna be going back to the front. I'll probably have to undo this connector so we can get those back there. Uh, we also have this SATA 12 volt power, SATA bolt power 12 volt piece, which I don't think we're gonna be using. So we're gonna put that in there for right now. Uh, furthermore, we also have our, uh, our USB right here. So we're gonna get this one connected in, okay, USB. And then we also have our HD audio. Okay, so those need to be run to the front. So um, we're probably gonna have to undo this cable here and it gets a little bit of slack. Okay, so I have uh, fed in the HD audio cord right through this bottom area to the bottom left, right above the case from the back. It is missing a, uh, a small connector to the uh, second from the top right when I'm plugging in. So uh, we're gonna go ahead. It's all the way over here to the far right hand side. It's called J odd one. And I also checked the manual to make sure that was right. And so we are going to just go and plug that guy in just like that. Yeah, it's pretty darn easy. So the USB. Okay, we can also come through the same area. Okay, feed that one in. Okay, and it's missing a port. Let's see here, yep, to the bottom. You'll see it over here, it's the far bottom right. My fingers, I'm sorry, I'm getting in the way. So if you come in over here, it goes right next to the other USB one. So let's scoot this over. Yeah, maybe that's better. So what you see this plugged in right here, that is one of the USB ones that we use for that color for the uh, fan and the other USB 2.0 is right to the left of that. And so we're gonna take this, again, it's kind of idiot proof because you can see how many connectors there are and it's missing one to the bottom right. And we plug that in. Okay, there it goes, nice and easy. The next up is with the, we have the USB 3.0, which has a blue kind of connector plug on it. And the USB 3.0, yeah, I can see it down there. It's labeled JUSB3. Okay, so if I can point to it with this thing, I'll have a better idea. It's this guy right here. So you can see there, there's the connect connector. But I'm just gonna kind of flip it around and plug it straight into there. So let's do that. Boom, there it is. That this is one of the system fans. We'll unplug that in. Again, we'll use our porthole right here. Why not? And we'll go to the first system fan one. And I can tell that these match up, so that's good. Okay. Okay, so I want to show you guys a little closer view here on the 10, uh, pin connector section that's over here to the far right where you're going to use the uh, the reset and also the uh, the power um, cable and all whatever so those those two with the little plus and minuses on them to the right hand side of the, the HDMI 3 that we plugged in just a little bit ago that's that blue connector okay so that's where those little plus and minus wires are going to go into the one on the very very top starting on the third um, pin coming out from the left 
is where the power SW is going to go. So that's on the third and fourth top pins going from left to right. Okay, so that's the top one up there. Just below that, starting at the first two pins on the bottom left, is that uh, OLED, and that's the plus and minus one. Okay, so that's on the far left, pins one and two, the bottom set. The top two pins should not have anything in there. So it goes one, two, blank. Three and four goes to the power SW on a little connector. Then starting on the second row, again, for pins one and two go to the OLED. And then just to the right of that, on the third and fourth uh, insert set, that is going to be the, I believe they call that the reset, okay? Which they showed in the manual, and I'll show a little uh, picture over here. Uh, it, it showed the minus and plus, like reverse. So I turned it upside down and put it in because I assumed with everything was standing, that plus was always on the left when the reverage was up top. The plus was on the left and the minus is on the right. So I flipped those two. Um, I guess when we power it up, we will see if everything works. But uh, that's what I've come to understand, and that's what we're going to do. All right, now that we have pretty much everything else put together, make sure you go into the back of your system and uh, before you plug in your cord or after you plug in your cord, whatever, before you turn on the system, make sure you flip this upward, okay? Show the power on. Otherwise, your system will not power on. That's pretty straightforward, I think. All right, so it's been quite a journey here for our first uh, ever build here on the Z-Mam show. Hopefully, one and last for a long time. But either way, we have all the parts plugged in. You followed uh, along the way on this long and tedious process, but I, I'm really excited. I learned so much. Hopefully you all did too, and I am ready to hit the power button. So fingers crossed. Here we go. Power on. So I have my monitor hooked up with the HDMI, power to the monitor as well. So um, in a few moments here, hopefully we should get a bio screen. And if we do, we are, we are in luck. As you can see, we have the lights going. Remember we uh, remember earlier we wanted to plug in those lights so that it ran from uh, the motherboard. What? Okay, here we go. Nice. Sorry, interrupted myself there. But as you can see in the background here, we do have our bio screen here. Let me get my uh, let me get my keyboard here. Okay. So I got my wireless keyboard. Which remember, here we go. Got all the lights going and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that is that Corsair. And again, this is all um, in the notes below if you want to know where to find it for the best price. So we have our bio screen. We're showing that it's running at the, I guess, the standard CPU speed of what it came out with at 3.8 gigahertz. And it looks like the DDR speed is going a little bit slower than what it can because um, remember, we, this is 3200. So we can probably change that here. Okay, so while we were right here, I just want to go ahead and show you um, how basically you can switch. So I noticed that my DDR speed uh, came in at just the standard, I guess, 21, 33 megahertz. But that's not truly correct because it needs to be at 3200. That's what the RAM is for. So what uh, we could do to fix that here is I noticed you can go into settings. No, actually, I lied. It's overclock, the OC button over here. And then down below we have the uh, DRAM frequency. So we're gonna switch, it's on auto right now, but we want the DDR4 3200, okay? And so once we've done that, uh, we should be able to hit back, I maybe hit, let's see here. Oh, save and, yeah, we wanna make sure we hit save and exit. For all intents and purposes, we are where we need to be. The next steps will basically be getting your uh, operating system installed with Windows, so you wanna get a little flash drive, uh, if you want to know some more information on that, there's videos already out there. But if you want, I could do one for you as well. But you basically get a flash drive. You'll go to Windows site. You'll you'll get their fresh, clean install. You know, for new computers, make sure you find that version. Uh, I might actually put that in the notes below for you as well. And you'll plug it in. It'll boot from your flash. Uh, I don't know if you can see it over here. There's an M flash option here on the left hand side, and that'll allow you to basically boot from that little USB drive and and get the whole process started for you. Before you know it, you'll be up and running with Windows and lots of gaming and editing good times. Once I have Windows installed and all my other programs, we'll see what Adobe Premiere, let's see how that reacts to some 4K footage and uh, how fast it can render it out. So I'm looking forward to it. Real excited, guys. And uh, so thanks for joining in and, and be a part of the, uh, uh, the build. I'll talk to you guys later.